Can a simple moving average strategy beat the market? When people talk about technical analysis, these are the charts that we see. But what if we strip all that back to just one single indicator? What results would it produce? I tested 15 years of data to find out. But first, what is a moving average? A moving average is a technical indicator that is the average of the X previous prices, where X is the moving average period. For example, a 20 moving average looks at the previous 20 price points and responds to price changes quickly. This is referred to as a fast moving average. On the other hand, a 200 moving average looks at the last 200 price points and responds much slower to changes in price and is often referred to as a slow moving average. This indicator filters out the peaks and troughs of price movement and creates a smooth line that shows the direction in which price is moving. It's a lagging indicator, which means it doesn't predict price, but it can be used to show the direction of the trend, and as such, it's suited to a trend trading strategy. The strategy itself is simple. When the price closes above the moving average, I'm going to go long, and when it closes back below the moving average, I'll exit the long position and wait for the next entry signal. There are many tools you could use for testing these strategies. I'm going to be using Python, and I'll put a link to the code below. I begin by importing the relevant libraries, the most important one being Y Finance, which I use to download data from Yahoo Finance. I then need to define some of my starting variables. I'm going to do this backtest on the S&P 500. I will use a moving average period of 50 and a starting balance of 10,000. I'll set my date range from the 1st of January 2005 to the 1st of January 2020, which will give me 15 years of data. I can then download that data from Yahoo Finance. And down here, I've got the Pandas data frame with all of the data downloaded. I'm only interested in the open and the close prices though. So I'm going to drop all of these other columns out of my data frame. Next, I can plot this data to show me the price chart that I've downloaded. I compare it to the real chart as a quick check that everything looks correct. Next, I can calculate my daily returns based on the close from today's price and yesterday's price. I then multiply that return by my starting balance to give me the balance of a buy and hold strategy. This gives me a benchmark to compare the moving average strategy against. After that, I calculate my moving average based on that 50 day period that I defined at the beginning. And I can plot that out with the moving average overlaid on top of the price in this red line. Next, I get all of my long entries, which are based on price closing above the moving average. From that, I can calculate the system return which is just a normal daily return, but only on the days when the strategy is long. I then calculate the system balance in the same way as I did with the benchmark. Now I can plot the two of them together to see the results. Buy and hold is this blue line and the moving average strategy is the red line. Straight away, the result doesn't look great, but let's get some metrics calculated to actually be able to compare these two strategies. The overall profit is important, but equally as important is the drawdown, which is what I calculate here. In the next section, I group my metrics together and I introduce a couple more. The CAGR, which is the compounded annual growth rate, and the time in market, which is a useful metric to compare your strategy against buy and hold, which is in the market every day. And down here, we can see the results. The buy and hold strategy returned 6.9% annually over the 15 years of test data. By comparison, the 50 period moving average strategy only returned 1.95%, so it's significantly worse. The drawdown is a little bit better than buy and hold, but overall, it's a pretty poor performing strategy. But I picked that value of 50 for my moving average just arbitrarily, it's a nice round number. What I like to do instead is test a whole range of different moving average periods and see how they perform. So I've taken all of the code above and I've put it inside of this backtest function. In the next section, I define a range of periods to test between 20 and 250, skipping by two each time. I then pass those one by one into the backtest function to give me the compounded annual growth rate for each period. And that's what you're seeing in this chart here. Now the value that I've chosen of 50 is sitting right around here. But you notice that as the period increases, the return also seems to increase. This is where curve fitting becomes a bit of an issue, but you can generally see that above around 200 moving average, you're getting much better results than lower down. And I can even calculate the optimal value, which is a moving average of 238. Using this value specifically isn't a great idea because now the strategy is becoming overfitted. However, it does look like anything above 200 is giving better results. So I will rerun this backtest with a moving average of 200 to compare the results. 
This is the result of the 200 period moving average system. The annual return is a lot better, although it's still not as good as a buy and hold strategy. And the drawdown does improve again. Overall, the results here aren't great and probably not worth trading with. But it is possible to improve this strategy a little bit. Right now, I'm using a single moving average and I'm waiting for the price to cross above and below it to give me my entry and exit signals. But instead, I can tweak this strategy by adding a second moving average. Now I have a 200 period slow average and a 50 period fast moving average. The trade signals are going to be based entirely on the crossovers between these two averages. Whenever the fast 50 period moving average crosses above the slow 200 period, that's going to give me my buy signal. When they cross back below, that's my exit signal. I modify my previous code slightly to add two moving average periods, a 50 and a 200 for the fast and the slow MA. I can then calculate them separately inside of my data frame and I would put them in this graph where you can now see this yellow and red moving average crossing over multiple times. My long entries come from the fast moving average crossing above the slow moving average. From here, the rest of the code is very similar to before and this chart shows the results. The blue line is the buy and hold benchmark strategy and the red line is our moving average cross strategy. You can already see a big improvement from before. The important thing to look at is these flat lines here, which is where the strategy kept us out of significant downturns, thus preserving some of that capital and reducing drawdown. Now let's have a look at the metrics. Down here, I do the same comparison as before. This time, the annual return is 7.09%, a lot better from before and slightly higher than the benchmark, but the drawdown is significantly better than the benchmark. And that's a really important metric to look at because being 20% down compared to being 57% down is massive psychologically when you're in that trade. Now again, I picked 50 and 200 just as arbitrary values because they're nice round numbers and they're the kind of numbers that would often be recommended for moving average strategies. So just like before, I combined everything into one function I then created two ranges, one for the fast and one for the slow periods. So I can test everything from five to 100 for my fast moving average and 140 to 250 for my slow moving average. And this is the result that we end up with. Because I'm comparing two different values, I use the heat map to better represent this. On the Y axis, we've got the slow moving average going from 140 to 250. And on the X axis is the fast moving average from five to 100. This color bar here shows the annual return of each combination, with blue being the lowest and red being the highest. Now again, there is significant risk of curve fitting with something like this, where you adapt the strategy to fit the specific data set you're working with. So trying to extract the optimal combination isn't a good idea, but it does seem like there's an area over here that seems to give better results than some of the other regions. And it's sitting somewhere between 25 to maybe 40 on the fast moving average and somewhere between 200 and 240, 245 on the slow moving average. And I can actually extract those values below. So the maximum value that I was able to obtain with this strategy is 8.33 annual return. And that was achieved with a fast MA of 25 and slow of 220. This doesn't mean that this is the best combination to use. It's just the best combination for this particular data set. Going forward, it would be important to test this strategy on other data sets and see how the numbers compare. But for this example, let's plug in 25 and 220 and just rerun the whole simulation. I've updated my fast and slow moving averages here and everything has now been recalculated. So if I go down to my price chart, I can see the results here and I scroll down to my metrics and you can see now the system returned 8.33% per year a little bit better than the benchmark and the drawdown was reduced even more. In addition to that, the time in the market was 72%, meaning that for the remaining 27, 28%, that money was available to use in other strategies. So can this simple moving average strategy beat the market? Well, based on these numbers, yes, it can. However, there are some caveats. One is that this backtest doesn't take into account some of the real life factors of trading like slippage or transaction fees, which will eat into your returns. Additionally, these numbers have been trained on this specific data set that I've got. To verify it further, it would be useful to test this across other markets, different time periods, and if the back tests continue to give good results, then testing it with out of sample data or even live data would be the next test for the strategy. I hope you found this interesting. Let me know what you think in the comments and I will see you in the next video.